thank you for watching. Uh, today we're going to uh, exploit uh, a non-privileged program, uh, DAV text, uh, but it is a current package in at least Kali Linux and probably other Debian-based distros as well. We're going to have some mitigations uh, such as uh, NX and DEP and also with and without ASLR, uh, but it will be for 32-bit uh, and we won't have stack canaries uh, on it. So let's uh, install this program, dav text. We're going to modify uh, the make file. So we'll make it 32 bit. Uh, we'll keep it as position independent executable so we won't use the NoPy. Um, and we'll do that as well. Stack protector, sorry about that. So let's uh, see if we can run the program. We can. So in this particular program, there's a buffer overflow. Right here, in this particular line here. Copying an environment variable into the home environment variable into the home local buffer, which is only 80 bytes long. So, classic uh, stack overflow. Let's just uh, verify that we can crash this program. Uh, let's make a buffer 2,000 characters long and run it again, and we've got a segmentation fault. Let's actually see if we control EIP. And we do. So, classic stack overflow, overriding the return address. No problem. So the first thing we want to do is create a pattern use the share meta exploit framework exploit where are we tools exploit pattern create length 2000 this will create a cyclic pattern that we can use to determine how big the buffer has to be to overwrite the return address. So I can just show that cyclic pattern. Let's go into GDB now. Run this. Now we've noticed our EIP is different. So now the next thing we want to do, we're doing a return to libc. Actually, let's just create our return to libc exploit.py. Use it bin Python. Let's do buffer equals 
times 312 going to port OS port struct okay so we're going to do a return to libc exploit so we need to know two things the address of system and the address of bin sh so let's to start off with turn aslr off this will turn aslr off great so let's restore our home environment variable start our program again we're going to use GDB Peter we're going to set breakpoint at we'll do it at start run great and now we have our address of system pretty easy so let's go libc system equals struct pack this is a little endian integer there we go now what we want to do is find somewhere in memory a string or a pointer to a string bin sh so gdb pedo is really good for this Great, we found it in libc. Awesome. So libc bin sh. Excellent. So we're almost there now to bin sh. Well, it's a very quick exploit to write. So let's do OS environment calls buffer. And we need to continue our our buffer as well. But that let's just do prog name. Okay. So that's the setup. Now what about our buffer? This is the most important part of course. So what we know the return address should point to the system library call. It's pretty straightforward. So let's do buffer equals libc system. Now when you're in this system library call it assumes it assumes it has been called by a function system has been called by a caller calling function which implies that there's a return address on the stack that when this library call returns that return address will be taken now for us we're not doing a change return to libc we're just well, effectively going to seek fault, probably, if we don't set the return address to something useful. So for us, we're going to ignore that and we're going to say, have some padding. So it will seek fault after system exits. Now let's add our argument to our system library call, libc bin sh. And that is our return to libc exploit. So let's go back up here. Let's copy dav 
and run our exploit. Whoop. There we go. Let's run our exploit. Got a shell. So we gain code execution, return to libc, Let's exit, and we get a seg fault because at this point it's returning to that return address which is a a a a. Now let's turn ASLR back on. And let's do a little one liner. Turn to libc export. Now before we do this, let's just verify that our exploit no longer works, segfault. And that's because of ASLR, the address of libc, uh, the base address is, is it a different address? So let's run our script to brute force ASLR. taking a while for this one. There we go. That took a lot longer than um, the average. It took us 753 attempts to brute force ASLR. Let's just run it again to see how long it will take a second time. There we go. So we brute force ASLR in 579 attempts. Sometimes it's very fast, sometimes it's a bit slower. So that took, that took a bit longer than, uh, than you know, 10, 15, 30 seconds to, to trigger. Let's just run it again. It's quite, it's quite interesting to see um, to see these run. There we go, that took 77 times. That was very fast to brute force ASLR. And that's our exploit. Very simple exploit. Return to libc, a non-executable stack and heap, a position independent binary, uh, with and without ASLR. Thank you very much. Go to my Patreon page, check out the YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys next time.